Good afternoon. The National Assembly for Wales is now in session. And the first item this afternoon is questions to the First Minister. Question one is withdrawn. Question two, Elena Parrott. Uh, Josh Lewis. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Putting Things Right complaints procedure used in Welsh health boards? Well, Putting Things Right was introduced in 2011, providing robust arrangements for investigating <coughs> and learning lessons from concerns and complaints. In July of last year, an independent review concluded it's the right approach and considerable work is underway both locally and nationally to implement the recommendations. Uh, thank you, First Minister. I understand that that review identified responsiveness as one of the challenges um, from health boards. Um, and I'm dealing with a number of cases at the moment where the health boards and indeed the Ambulance Trust have been very slow to respond to um, patients and families. For those coming to terms with the death of a loved one, perhaps particularly, <clears throat> those delays are simply agonising. They often feel that they need answers before they can properly grieve. Um, yet I'm dealing, as I say, with cases where um, we have uh, seen some cases dragging on for perhaps two and a half years since the death of an individual um, without any resolution being brought. Can I ask you for an update on um, how the, um, the reviews, um, implement, the implementation of the recommendations is going with regards to the timeliness of responses from those boards? It's difficult, of course, to uh, give a view on each and every uh, situation because some will be more complicated than others. We expect, of course, uh, local health boards to resolve complaints as quickly as is possible. Uh, there may be occasions, of course, where a health board will need to take longer than 30 days to uh, respond. But nevertheless, it is important, of course, that people are able to get uh, satisfaction from the complaints process as quickly as is possible, bearing in mind there may be some occasions where uh, more complex investigations may be needed. Darren Miller. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, First Minister, when Keith Evans undertook his review, there was quite wide variation against uh, the, th the number of responses that were being addressed within 30 days by health boards, uh, ranging from 33% to 82% of complaints uh, in individual health boards. The current figures for the Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board are just that 21% are being resolved within 30 days. And worse than that, a uh, greater number than 50%, fewer than half, are actually being addressed within a six-month period. Now, clearly, that is unacceptable. What uh, action are you taking to hold the feet of health boards to the fire to ensure that, as a Welsh Government, your policy is actually being fully implemented by health boards? Well, first of all, we, as I mentioned in the uh, initial answer I gave, uh, the recommendations of the report are being implemented. I can say uh, that where a response cannot be issued within 30 working days, NHS organisations must inform a person who's raised a concern the reason for that delay. We expect, of course, local health boards to uh, ensure that they implement the recommendations, and that is something that they are in the process of doing. Washington Thomas. Uh, Prime Minister, I think i Anodd unwaith doi i'r i'r o'i barn ynglyn â uh, sefyllfa unrhyw unigolyn, uh, ond fi'n gwybod bod hwn yn rhywbeth uh, pwysig i'r gwynidog uh, iechyd. Ni moyn sicrhau uh, lle ma bobl a chwynion bod gyda nhw'r cyfle i gael y cwynion uh, i ddatrys mor gyntaf yn sy'n Question 3, Nick Ramsey. Will the First Minister provide an update on plans for improving the Welsh NHS? Yes, we've invested an additional £295 million in 2015 to 16 for the NHS in Wales to deliver high quality sustainable services. Uh, First Minister, what steps are you taking to improve access to cancer treatments in Wales? You'll be aware of my constituent, Anne Wilkinson, who's been unable to access Avastin despite it being available a few short miles across the border from her home in England. This really isn't good enough at the moment, is it, First Minister? Now, no one is saying that that list of cancer treatments shouldn't change with time and be amended uh, as evidence comes forward, but it really would be helpful if we had a list in Wales to start with, wouldn't it? When are you going to take action and give people in Wales the, trans the cancer treatment they need? First of all, of course, the Cancer Drugs Fund in England is being curtailed uh, in the sense that uh, there are drugs being removed from that list because, uh, as we know, it's overrun in terms of its budget. 
There is good news from it in the sense that now, of course, pharmaceutical companies are having to come back with a better price. The problem with the cancer drugs, and one of the difficulties is that basically it pays whatever the drug companies ask. There's no negotiation, no bargaining, no value for money as far as the public are concerned. That is now beginning to happen as a result of the curtailment of part of the fund in England. But we take the view that it's important that people have access to effective drugs as quickly as possible. And that's why, of course, in Wales, approved drugs are more accessible than in England when it comes to cancer. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister, are you satisfied that all of the money spent on public and personal health promotion and plans is cost effective and is proving to be useful? And are you satisfied that all of the campaigns currently underway or being considered are worth it for their outcomes? Yes. We now move to questions from the party leaders. And first this afternoon, we have the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew R.G. Yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, First Minister, last Thursday, uh, through great fanfare and announcement in the press, uh, but sadly not a statement in this institution, uh, your government brought forward proposals for apprenticeships in West Wales and the Valleys, £141 million, something I, I welcome. I mean, anything that offers people opportunities in some of our most uh, socially challenged areas has to be welcomed. Uh, but how can you make the scheme that you've brought forward actually benefit the people in those communities because if you go back to 2000 and 2007 similar schemes were brought forward yet economic activity uh, wasn't forthcoming well we know of course the experience of jobs growth wales and the experience we've had with funding Separate apprenticeships appren that there is demand uh, for more apprenticeships apprenticeships and that's why we are pleased of course to be able to announce uh, these apprenticeships uh, which can and the figure of course compares very favorably with the announcement that's been made by the current uk government Mr. Minister, you can go through reams of information on schemes that were brought forward in the Objective 1 era in convergence funding, and now obviously we've attracted the third round, or your government has managed to attract the third round of funding, which on the surface sounds good, but equally, when you look at it, it's because economically we have not performed. And what we want to know is, with this announcement, are you really going to make the gains that those communities desperately require economically so that we won't, as a country, have to be applying for a fourth tranche of money because economically the policies you've brought forward have failed? Well, on a day where we see uh, growth in the UK economy slowing to one of its lowest levels for years, uh, under the stewardship, of course, of the uh, Conservative Party, that's perhaps an unfortunate question. I, I, I'll be charitable. I do welcome his, uh, his welcome, of course, for the scheme. Uh, we know that uh, the more skills people ha have, the more employable they are. And, of course, uh, another uh, outcome of this scheme is that more money will be made available to further education colleges who will be able to deliver those apprenticeships. Sadly, we all know the record of your government's uh, apprenticeship schemes. Last year, you withdrew funding, and so 9,000 apprenticeship places were lost, First Minister. You could have used some of the answers that I sought to seek from you to try and set some goals where we might be at the end of this funding window. As I said, there's reams of information here on previous tranches of Objective 1 convergence funding money that has gone in to create apprenticeship, gone in to try and create economic activity, and regrettably, they have failed. You've let those communities down in West Wales and the Valleys. Can you use the third opportunity to respond to me by saying where you believe economically those communities will be and what goals, tangible goals, are you setting that we can actually see real progress and we're not in the situation of trying to attract the fourth round of funding? Well, we know the GDP per head has increased. We know the GDHI per head has increased. We see the development in many communities such as Swansea. We see the enterprise zones being developed in West Wales and the Valleys from Anglesey down to, to Pembrokeshire. Uh, and we see the jobs that have been attracted as a result. We take the view that people need the skills in order to uh, allow uh, the Welsh economy to uh, prosper. And, of course, uh, we have done a bit as a government, having the best figures for foreign direct investment than for 30 years. Uh, and that is a sign that we are we proactive as a government. We, we invest in our apprentices. We invest in jobs in Wales. But we need, of course, to make sure that we have a UK government that takes a similar view. We now move to the leader of the Welsh Liberal Camp Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, what assessment and scenario planning has your government carried out with regards to the impact on schools funding following the Westminster election? I don't know the result, so it's very difficult to predict what the uh, outcome might be. Uh, you'll be aware, though, First Minister, that I and my party here in this chamber have always made schools funding a priority when discussing budget agreements uh, with yourself, and it's also a priority for my colleagues in London. 
Uh, what impact did you think a commitment to protect pupil funding from nursery to 19 in England uh, would mean in real terms for your Welsh Government? Uh, well, of course, as a government that has protected school spending, despite the cuts that we've had uh, over the last five years, uh, and, of course, having worked with um, the Members' Party when it comes to the Pupil Deprivation Grant, I think we share uh, a commitment to education. It's very difficult, of course, uh, to offer a view on what she's just said for two reasons. Uh, nobody knows what the outcome will be uh, on the uh, 7th of May. And secondly, of course, we don't know what commitments that are made uh, in England uh, would lead to any consequentials for Wales. Perhaps I can assist you with the latter, First uh, Minister. The commitment that my party has made uh, during the Westminster elections would put in extra funding equivalent to 5.2 billion more funding than the Conservatives and 2.5 billion more funding than Labour. That would result uh, in up to £150 million pounds of an additional funding and consequentials for Wales. But what I would like to know, Minister, is will you commit that should that money be available, it will go directly into the education budgets in Wales too? That will be a substantial amount of money, and we are committed to uh, education, and do we want to see education thrive in Wales? As I say, what we don't know is whether 150 million will come with one hand but be taken away with the other. That's what we've seen, of course, over the last five years, but I look forward to continuing these uh, potential coalition negotiations in another place. Will the leader reply coming? Leanne Wood. <coughs> Dear Llywydd. First Minister, I'm sure you were as moved as I was to see the news of almost 2,000 uh, refugees lose their lives recently attempting to cross the Mediterranean. Now, Wales has a proud tradition of providing sanctuary to refugees, and I pay particular tribute to the current Minister for the Economy, who intervened and took a stand against the imprisonment of asylum seekers here in Cardiff Prison back in 2003. Despite be this being a, a reserved matter, have you had an opportunity to express the views of your government with the, your counterparts in Westminster? Well, I, I can say that we are all appalled at what we've seen in the Mediterranean. Uh, sometimes people take the view that it's an easy thing for people to leave their country of birth, uh, cross the sea in an unseaworthy craft to a very uncertain future. You and I both know that that isn't the case. It's absolutely crucial that where people are in difficulty, they receive the help that they, that they need when they're at sea. And, of course, we should continue the proud tradition that we have in the UK of offering asylum to those who are in need of it. Thank you for your answer, First Minister. As you know, the UK Government has two primary schemes for refugees. One is called the Gateway Scheme and the other is called the Mandate Scheme. Now, whilst the Gateway Scheme has a set quota for the settlement of refugees in the UK, there is concern that the quota is not being filled. With the current crisis in the Mediterranean, would the Welsh Government consider seeking a specific Welsh quota as part of the UK quota so that Wales can play its part in providing sanctuary for those people who are fleeing violence and danger from countries like Syria and Libya? Uh, it's an interesting suggestion. What we do know, though, of course, is that people tend to uh, congregate in areas where there are, there are people of a, of a like background. Uh, it's, it's human nature to, uh, to do that. Uh, but certainly from our point of view, we are more than ready to play our part in offering asylum to those people who need it, building, of course, on the tradition that we have. I, I'm often fond of saying, and I'll say it in this chamber, that we are all in this chamber and indeed on this island the descendants of immigrants. It's simply a question of when our families originally arrived. Thank you, First Minister. Now, despite the fact that this is reserved, as I've initially said, there is merit, I think, in seeking a multinational approach to the refugee crisis within the United Kingdom. Would you agree with me, therefore, First Minister, if cross-party support could be secured for Wales to become a nation of sanctuary for refugees, that might aid uh, securing that multinational, multi-governmental approach to this humanitarian crisis? And so would you support a joint declaration with other parties in this chamber to that end? Well, it's, it is a matter that we have been discussing in the Faith Communities Forum, the issue of a nation of, uh, of sanctuary. It's something uh, that has been raised by a number of representatives uh, there, and it is something I have great sympathy for. I think it's important to give a message that we are a welcoming and open society uh, for those who are most in need, regardless of where they are from in the world. 
Uh, of course, what we look to do now is to build on the work that's been done by organisations such as the Welsh Refugee Council, such as the uh, Faith Communities Forum, uh, and I, I would be more than happy, of course, to, uh, to look to see how we can develop this uh, process in Wales and, of course, to seek the support of other parties. We now move back to questions on the paper, and question four is Mike Hedges. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the operation of the Blue Badge Scheme? Yes, there will be an oral statement on that scheme later this afternoon. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Uh, that w it wasn't on the agenda when I put that question uh, forward, unfortunately. Uh, can I just say that I, a lot of my constituents have asked me to raise this uh, specifically with you. Uh, the work in the Blue Badge Scheme has caused a substantial amount of upset uh, and worry to a large number of frail elderly people in Swansea. Uh, the toolkit has currently be, has been operated seems to work against the frail, the elderly and the infirm who desperately need a, need a blue, need blue badge. Uh, uh, can I ask, ask, and I'm sure I know the answer is going to be, will a new toolkit for blue badge assessment be issued in the near future so that we can get away from what's happening at the moment where people who are desperately in need of it are being turned down daily? Well, the member raises an important issue. Of course, it's something I'm sure that, that uh, many members in this chamber have received in their post bag and by email. And that's why, of course, the minister is making a full statement this afternoon, which uh, I hope the member will uh, find uh, is a satisfactory way forward. Mohammed Ashkar. Thank you, officer. First Minister, the point system designed to help Council assess an applicant's need for blue badge is heavily weighed in favour of those in receipt, receipt of disabil disability benefits. Some medical conditions manifest themselves in a way that the sufferer may not even have thought of applying for disability benefits or may not have done so through pride. Could the toolkit be adjusted so that receipt of benefit is not the only reali realistic criteria to successful application for a blue badge. Of course, as disability benefit becomes ever harder to obtain, we have to ensure that the blue badge scheme doesn't have unintended consequences, and that's why, of course, the Minister is making the statement. Peter Black. Thank you, uh, Sanyo. I think this has been preempted a bit by the Minister's statement. But do you share my concern, First Minister, that um, both Neath Batalwas and Swansea have effectively opted out of using the Welsh Government's toolkit, making their process less transparent and harder to appeal? And can I ask whether that will be included in the remit of the review? On, no, that will ask the Minister that later on. But, I, I, yeah. I'm sure the Minister will provide you the full answer. Question five, Sandy Mewis. Uh, thank you. First Minister, will you provide an update on what the Welsh Government is doing to increase the supply of housing in Wales? Yes, we've put in place a number of measures to increase housing supply, including uh, Help to Buy Wales, the Social Housing Grant Programme, reforming the planning system and a new housing finance uh, grant. And the latest statistics show that annual completions during 2013 to 2014 were the highest for four years. Thank you for that. In, in my constituency, Flintshire County Council, as you know, uh, uh, will be be begin building council housing for, 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 for the first time in 24 years. The hundreds of houses which will be provided are desperately needed at a time when many families and individuals struggle to get a decent home which is in good condition. Across the border, the Tories are planning to once again devastate social housing stocks by selling them off cheap. So what is the Welsh Government doing to secure the stock of social houses in Wales and incentivise councils to continue to build more homes? The provision is an important part of housing provision in Wales. We know that over the past 30 years a substantial amount of public housing has been lost and, and not replaced. Powys, for example, has lost something like half of its housing stock in that time. Now, we are, of course, uh, ensuring that that gap is filled. It will take some time because it's a gap that built up over many, many years. But what we cannot do is to have a, a similar proposal in Wales as has been proposed by the Conservatives in England, because that would, would mean the gap would never be filled. Uh, a one-for-one -one, uh, replacement uh, basis is not going to work in terms of filling the gap in public housing that has emerged since the end of the 1970s. Mark, you should. Uh, thank you. Well, of course, England's been building council houses because of the exemption of the housing revenue account that Wales has only just caught up with. But uh, when the Welsh Conservatives announced uh, a uh, no-stamp duty on properties under £250,000 in Wales, uh, you criticised uh, that. Um, when we uh, re previously referred questions over rent controls, your housing minister said that rent controls reduce the incentive for landlords to invest and can then lead to reduction in quality housing. I think that could give possible unintended consequences to the supply of private rented properties. Given Mr Miliband's announcements on both those matters, uh, 
UK level for England. Uh, what are your policies now uh, in Wales, given the statements by your government previously? This is a devolved government. We take decisions that are appropriate for, for Wales. And uh, what is appropriate for Wales is not a situation where there's a substantial amount of loss of public housing. Uh, we know that would be the case uh, if English policies were applied here. Uh, and, of course, uh, we are fully aware uh, of what our party says in England, and like, of course, your own party leader who hasn't actually read his own manifesto. Question six, Roger Glenn Thomas. How nice to be with you, Dr. Kanya, the Maddis Pethach and Shika Verdin. The Maddis Pethach and Carl E. Dar Pari and Shir Gar Val Menter Arkid, Rum Colleg Shir Gar Aradodod Seal, my Gandhi Perthanas Wife Agos Va Young. Well, my boss is one of the Perthanas Agos Va Young, Rum Colleg Shir Gar Aradodod Seal. Dwi ddim yn siŵr a os na berthynas cweit mor dda yn bodoli rhwng coleg Sir Gara Llywodraeth Cymru. Oherwydd y mae'r coleg, y myfyrwyr, y dylithwyr a theiliwydd y myfyrwyr yn teimlo bod effeithiau y toriadau ar y gyllidau baddus bellach wedi cael effaith andwyol iawn ar y ddarpariaeth. Mae'n a gyrsiau yn cael eu cael awr, y mae'n a myfyrwyr yn cael eu gwrthod ar gyfer cyrsiau, y mae'n a ddarlithwyr yn cael eu diswyddo ar hyn o bryd. Ydy hynny y math o weled i gest sy'n ganddoch chi ar gyfer addysg bellach yng Nghymru? O dau beth mae'n anodd, wrth gwrs i bob coleg yng Nghymru, ni'n diallan ni, ond ni'n ffilio alefus ddim dynnu. Ni wel y toriadau sydd i dod 10 o o Lundain, a felly dwi'r arian ddim na yn y ffordd beth ni eisiau. Gwyddwyd beth ydych yn newid wrth wrth nosau nesaf wrth gwrs. Yn ail wrth gwrs, yn ôl y daeth ganiad gath i wneud wrth wrth dweitha, yn un â ffrentio siaethau, ma'n a gyflau naw wrth gwrs i golegau i sicrhau mwy o gyllid yn y dyfodol o achos y cynllun hynny. Well, Rodrigo Lynn Thomas, dwi wedi cael nifer o gweinion am y sefyllfa yn coleg Sir Gaar, ond beth yw'r diwedd ar waith y gweithgor, gael eu ffurfio gan y gweinidog i leihau i effaith toriadau? Mae'r gweithgor yn dal i weithio, ond mae'n ei weithio, wrth gwrs, mae'n anodd iawn i golegau, a ni'n diall hynny, ni'n diall bod yn anodd iawn, mae'n sawl ran o wasanaethau cyhoeddus o achos y setliad ar i anodd ni wedi cael. Beth ni'n mwynhau sicrhau, wrth gwrs, i'w gweld pethau yn newid i'w gored dros y blynedd yn nesaf. Cwestiwn Seren, John Griffiths. Will the First Minister make a statement on the metro system for transport in South Wales? Yes, the Minister recently published an updated report setting up progress to date on the metro. The future of the franchise, the Wales and Borders franchise, that is, is a key element in its delivery, uh, and members will be updated on the progress of both before the summer recess. First Minister, the Metro proposals, I believe, are a transformative big idea for Wales, and South Wales in particular. They have a lot of support, I believe, across parties from a range of organisations and amongst the public. And, um, I hear what you say about um, updates due, First Minister, but would you agree with me that we do need fresh impetus for the Metro, which has been discussed for some time, uh, and particularly, I think, more detail in terms of the component parts, the routes, the infrastructure, um, the structure and body to take the ideas forward, um, as well as the vision behind these proposals? Uh, and would you, with me, look forward to that detail being made available in short order? Yes, I mean, what I can say to the member is this is a game-changing project and it cannot be done in a half-hearted way and it's got to be done properly. We understand that. Uh, I have had a number of meetings with the minister and with officials on this, including one yesterday, to look at uh, the progress and how we move forward. A number of issues to address, of course. Uh, the issue of uh, what kind of body runs the system, what kind of system it is, uh, what kind of its electric traction, of course. With, uh, 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 that's something, of course, that we, uh, we want to see. Uh, light versus heavy rail, uh, what the potential new routes are, and of course the rollout of the project uh, in terms of which lines do you look at first, uh, and of course how you uh, ensure that as that rollout happens that uh, those uh, who are waiting for rollout don't see ever older diesel locomotives on the line. So there are a number of issues that are being looked at at the moment, but I can give the member the assurance that we fully understand this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, that could transform the economic prospects of, a, of up to a million people in Wales. Aaron Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, last week you assured the Chamber that you were moving forward with plans for uh, the Metro, uh, but with no detail or time scale. Now, I've heard the answer that you've given um, already uh, to this. Um, so, can I 
ask you then to, to tell the Chamber um, to uh, when you expect to outline more detail and indeed can you outline what discussions you've had with transport operators uh, within South Wales regarding the plan metro as the operators I've discussed the plans with frankly have outlined uh, some confusion and lack of communication with government. No, not in the slightest. There's been full communication with operators. Uh, for example, one of the issues that has to be resolved on the Rumney Valley line, as one example, is the, uh, the, freight, the issue of the freight pathways on the line and how that works so that, that continues even as the line is adapted. There's also a, freight, a, a mineral pathway that goes down uh, from Hirwine. Those are matters that have been discussed. Uh, so all the operators know what the issues are. Uh, and what we are looking at is how we uh, deal with the franchise issue in terms of heavy rail, in particular whether we go for EMUs or light rail. These are important decisions in terms of achieving value for money, better speeds, better comfort, better trains, and ultimately, of course, ease of extension of the system in the future. Simon Thomas. Diolch Lewis. Fel eich yn gwaith hyfyn i dog, mae'r masnachfaint yn holl bwysig i'r rai o'r cwestiwn yma. Mae waith cael corff a fydd yn benthig ar ein sylweddol and there'd been a thief income of his endowed uh, or metro. Um, Gan fod i ddim yn siŵr o hyn o byd yng nglyn ar dyfodol y masnachfaint a gyfer Cymru ar gorol. Eh? Pa trafodaethau, pa opsiynau ydych chi'n edrych anol, yng nglyn ar ffordd y bydd y benthyciad ariannol sylweddol yna yn cael ei fanu yn erbyn llyfrau y Llywodraeth hon a llyfrau Llywodraeth San Stephen. Os na unrhyw uh, cynnydd na datblygiad yna... Mae'n sail opsiwn yn cael ei stryd o hyn o byd yng gynta yng nglyn ar chyllid wrth gwrs Ac yn ail, wrth gwrs, uh, ynglyn a natur uh, y corff bydd yn rhedeg y system i hunan. Uh, so mae'r sawl peth yn cael ei ystyried o'r hyn o bryd, ond fel wedi sy'n bydd y uh, gwneud o'n rhoi uh, mwy o fanylion cyn uh, dwedd y tymor uh, hyn, ond mae'r sawl peth yn cael ei ystyried o'r hyn o bryd ynglyn a, a'r system i hunan a'r ffordd y system yn cael ei gyllido a'r rhedeg. Question 8, Anne Jones. Thank you. Will the First Minister make a statement on obstetrics and gynaecology services as put your gland fluid, please? Well, I expect uh, Betsy Cadwalla at the University Health Board to take any necessary action to provide obstetrics and gynaecology services that are safe, sustainable and meet national clinical standards. Um, thank you for that, First Minister. And can I say thank you for all your assistance during the, the issues around obstetrics and the consultant led maternity services? Can I ask you what your government can do, though, to ensure that Health Board, in particular Betsy, but other health boards, um, don't have plans that will widen health inequalities in certain communities, such as those within my, with some of my areas? I do think it's important that people feel that if there is a health inequality there, that it isn't widened, and we should be doing all we can to, to provide a service that is truly equal and fair for everybody. I, I entirely agree with what the member has said. Uh, it, it is not our intention to widen health inequalities in any part of Wales. Indeed, uh, exactly the opposite, and we would expect local health boards uh, in any decisions that they take to ensure that health inequalities are not widened. Indeed, the health inequalities are reduced. Darren Miller. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, you'll be aware from personal experience in North Wales on the doorsteps over the past few weeks just what public outrage there is about the Health Board's uh, plans. And many people in, in North Wales are urging you and your government to intervene in the situation in order to maintain services at Glancluid Hospital. What is your response to them? Will you intervene and will you secure the future of those services in bottle with them? Well, of course, as the member knows, this is now a matter of judicial review in the courts. Uh, and so there is a, a, a limit on what I can uh, say. Uh, the decisions, the proposed decisions of the local health board will be tested in that forum, and we wait, of course, the outcome of that. Uh, I'r aelod dros ddyffryn clwyd uh, bod, bod angen safe clinical services, o mae'r clinicians i hunain, y BMA, nawr yn cefnogi adolygiad barnwrol. Dros bosib bod hynny uh, yn arwain i chi ail edrych ar y sefyllfa? Uh, Dwi'n pob un sy'n gweithio yn yr adran, pob pro profesiwn wedi cefnogi uh, sefyllfa y BMA, y llywyd yna, ond nad byddwch barn y BMA, mae nawr lan oedd gwrs i'r, uh, i'r, i'r llys i, i ystyried uh, yr achos i hunain, ac oedd gwrs i wneud penderfyniad. Hi, Robert. Diolch llywydd. Um, Dych chi wedi cyfeirio at y dau adolygiad barnwrol um, pan gyhoeddwyd yr adolygiad yn reidiol bydd wedodd y bwrdd iechyd bod nhw ddim yn mynd i weithredu ar eu cynlluniau tan i ganlyniad yr adolygiad yna um, gael eu gyhoeddi. 
um, ddoi be rhoddwyd datganiad gan y bwrdd iechyd yn deud fydd nhw'n mynd ymlaen i uh, benderfynu ar yr argymhellion ar y pymsegfed o fai a'i gweithredu nhw o'r uh, pedweredd ar bymseg o fai. Ydych chi'n fodlon efo'r ffaith bod y bwrdd iechyd rwan yn ymddangos fel bod nhw'n mynd i fwrw ymlaen efo'u cynlluniau? Uh, Byddwn i'n mynd gweithio bod nhw'n rhywbeth call i unrhyw awdurdod uh, iechyd i symud mlaen gyda newidiadau pa ma yna ar y lygiad yn Cymru'r lle. Yn bwysig dros ben bod yna ganlyniad felly uh, ynglyn a hwnna er mwyn bod pawb yn gwybod beth yw barn y llys a pawb yn gwybod felly beth yw'r cam yn nesaf. Question 9, Jenny Rathbone. Uh, First Minister, what is the government's strategy for the local production and consumption of renewable energy? Well, these matters are key components of Energy Wales, which sets out our approach to making the transition to a low-carbon energy system. Uh, last year, we published the Energy Wales Delivery Plan and the baseline study of renewable energy to show the actions we're taking and uh, progress that has been demonstrated so far. Um, some of the uh, lessons that was learnt by the Environment Committee on its visit to Germany indicates that one of the things that's needed is a stable feed-in tariff and the right of communities to both sell as well as produce their own energy, so that that has led to a blossom of renewable production and a solid source of income for many isolated communities. What discussions will you have with the incoming, hopefully, Labour government about breaking the monopoly role of the national grid so communities can own and sell their own renewable energy and also to ensure that there's some stability to the feed-in tariff which was torn up by the greenwash Tories? Well, the, the, the greatest problem that uh, any potential energy supplier faces is what price they're going to be paid. Uh, and that is a major break on investment. Until they know what the strike price is going to be, they won't make the investment for obvious reasons because they can't... Um, uh, make the figures stack up. So any kind of stability and certainty in the system is very much to be welcome. In terms of Wales, I know that the Minister has identified in her energy statement that there is an urgent need to address electricity grid matters in Wales. Failure to do so, we know, will severely impede our energy ambitions. We know that in some parts of Wales, the lack of capacity in the grid makes it difficult to attract investment because, of course, the, uh, the electricity can't be provided. That's part of the problem. We know it's true of the more rural parts of Wales, and that is something that we expect should be resolved in the future. Difficulty is, of course, if you strengthen the grid, quite often it means bigger pylons, and we know that leads to other issues. Last one, George. Uh, thank you, President <coughs> Officer. Uh, Minister, you have uh, previously stated that your government would not support, of course, uh, pylons, uh, large pylons in uh, Mid Wales. So I would be grateful if you could uh, update me on the most recent discussions you've had with uh, National Grid on the Mid Wales Connection Project? Well, of course, the matter now has been wrapped up by, uh, by DEC, uh, and so it's part of an inquiry. Uh, it is right to say, though, in the members' own constituency that the grid is fragile. We know that. Uh, we know that it would be very difficult to attract, uh, attract an investor into his constituency that was a, a, a high energy user because the, the grid isn't strong enough uh, to supply their, their needs. It's a difficult balance. We know that because we know, as he will know himself, uh, that where there is a proposal to strengthen the grid, there are inevitably um, people who will object to the size of the pylons. From our point of view, with regard to the matter he's referred to, uh, it was taken from our hands uh, by uh, Whitehall, and in Whitehall's hands it remains. Clear Griffith. Um, diolch, of course, my fion i ar yn weliad ar Almaen fel Pwysgol am Gylchydd yn ddiweddar i edrych ar y projectau yma, ac yn yr Almaen mae'r cymunedau hunain yn dod a safleoedd er enghraifft ar gyfer yn ni gwynt ymlaen, uh, y cymunedau hunain sy'n datblygu y projectau ac sydd hefyd uh, yn cadw'r elw. Yn wlad yma, of course, mae ganddo ni lywodraeth sydd yn gosod tan wyth ac yn dweud lle maen nhw'n mynd, uh, a mae ganddo ni'r chwech mawr yn dod mewn ac yn codi uh, y tyrbinau ac yn cymryd yr ynni ar elw. Beth mae'ch lywodraeth chi'n gwneud i gywiro hynny? Uh, Dwi'n gwybod wir yn rhan maen bod dim reolaeth o gwbl ynglyn â le mae tyrbanau yn mynd. Uh, Gaeth weithiau, wrth gwrs, tan wyth. Uh, does dim um, unrhyw fath o waharddiad ar um, y ffylinau gwynt ti fas i ardaloedd tan wyth? Dwi'n gwaharddiad llwyr. Le mae, mae'n bosib, mae bosib i, i ddangos bod na uh, modd, uh, bod, na, bod, bod na fydd uh, ynglyn â y ffylinau gwynt ti fas i tan wyth. Felly, mae'n rhywbeth sydd gallu cael ei uh, ystyried. Uh, beth oedd tan oedd yn, yn uh, ceisio yn gwneud, oedd uh, gweli oedd yr ardaloedd lle oedd uh, y ceisiadau mawr mynd i ddod a felly, wrth gwrs, rheoli 
ar adaloedd hynny, er mwyn sicrhau bod ddim o'r ddatblygiad yn, yn Cymru lleol. Mae'n dal i fod yn bosib i bobl i ddymlaen a phrojectau, prosiectau bach fel lle, yn yr adaloedd tu fas uh, i, uh, i, 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 I adaloedd tan wyth, er mwyn i awdurwyr lleol i ystyr i hynny. William Powell. <coughs> First Minister, one of the five green laws that my party is currently proposing would be specifically to extend the remit of the Green Investment Bank so as to uh, enable investment in small-scale community renewable schemes and also uh, to increase the potential for uh, investment in research and development of emerging technologies. Do you agree with me that this would provide a useful boost to the uh, potential development of community energy in Wales and also uh, lead to community energy schemes taking a higher profile in this country? If it brings more money to Wales, I will support it. But of course, Anir uh, Vrao has uh, taken the lead in terms of being able to encourage people uh, to take forward small projects. Uh, 58 projects are being supported uh, through that uh, scheme. Uh, and we know that uh, there will need to be a greater mix of energy generation in the future, from the very large generators, which are uh, needed because of our industrial base, uh, through to smaller community-based schemes that can provide uh, benefits not just for communities where those schemes are placed, but of course generally in terms of reducing carbon emissions. Question 10, Simon Thomas. I uh, have for Prime Minister Dog that Ghana am the vodol to Swiss economy. Well, uh, target is because you can dig dig in the quick meal or give a lot Swiss dross better than that. I've been doing this month to month, and then pass on target na or green dipping. Diolch uh, prif ni dogon i sylfu bod hwnna ddim yn datganiad ynglyn a dyfodol y cynllun sech hynny. Um, yn y gallyd y blynedd, wrthych chi uh, addo uh, 20.5 miliwn a gyfer dwy flynedd uh, o afian Llywodraeth Cymru, uh, gan ddweud y bydda estyn y raglen a gyfer y flwyddyn afianol hon. Yn y gallyd y gyfer y flwyddyn afianol hon, mae yna tofiad o chwater lawd o 20.5 miliwn i 9.3 miliwn. But the Bendig Vesley e Bobble Caskey, but the OID and a Persenol and a Cantlin, a head with Bohi, would he tobby the Cleedeb? Na, be the Ganyad Mishnasa and Lean are against a Cantlin Newith, be the door are all net jobs go to Wales Newith, Sredder Rivana, and he must take a high burn and say more Ginter is impossible. Jeff Cuthbert. Uh, the First Minister, Jobs Growth Wales, of course, has brought enormous benefits for young people and businesses in Wales. Over 17,000 jobs have been created so far, of which 1,200 have been filled in uh, the Caerphilly uh, County Borough alone. It's testament as well to the value of European Union membership for Wales. Do you agree with me, First Minister, that the false suggestion that has appeared in the media that Jobs Growth Wales is being scrapped or shelved is both reckless and misleading? Jobs Growth Wales is the most successful scheme of its type in Europe, and the new scheme will continue to bring benefits for young people and the Welsh economy overall. It, it is one of the most successful schemes, if not the most successful scheme in Europe. We know that 15,000 young people have started work through the programme. That's testimony to how successful it has been, and we look forward to putting in place a successor scheme from next month. William Graham. Uh, First Minister, you'll know that you uh, put out in a statistical release in March that the scheme was going to come to an end. Uh, it wasn't noted very much by the press. Either. But could you undertake today to say that no students have been disadvantaged by the fact there's been this gap? We still don't know what you're proposing in the future. Uh, no, because those already on the scheme will continue. There'll be a new scheme in, in place uh, and there'll be an announcement on that uh, next month. And we look forward to continuing with a scheme that in many ways replaced a scheme that his own party uh, removed, namely the Future Jobs Fund. Uh, we have done uh, our bit for uh, young people and we have done more than our bit in terms of replacing the uh, gap that was left by his own party. Question 11, Mark Isherwood. Thank you, Mark. What plans does the Welsh Government have to improve the transparency of information provided in response to freedom of information requests? Uh, we already ensure that by complying with the Act. Uh, thank you. Well, when I questioned you on the 3rd of February, um, after the Welsh Government had for a second time lost at the Information, information Rights Tribunal in the Clangothan River Lodge case, 
um, uh, over uh, refusal to provide uh, information. You responded by dismissing evidence-based allegations and saying that of the requests the Welsh Government receives, only 0.29% end up with information being released. How do you therefore do you respond to the official Welsh Government statistics, the latest published for 2013, that in fact say 60.9% uh, of completed requests uh, are released? Two out of 10, 1,099 requests uh, uh, completed out of 1,102 received. No, he misunderstands the point I was making. No, no, he is, he is trying to say, he is, he's using a figure for information released as a result of FI requests. That's true. The figure that he's trying to misuse is the figure in relation to the amount of information released as a result of referrals to the Commissioner. Yeah. And in fact, he quotes 0.29% as being uh, the figure of, of, in terms of information that is released. In fact, it's less than that. It's 0.22%. It's so actually we do better than he expected in the first place. I mean, compared, for example, to the UK government, uh, we are a paragon of transparency because our compliance rate was 93%. Uh, 91% in the UK government as a whole, 78% in Northern Ireland, uh, and Secret Scotland, 74% the compliance in Scotland. So uh, we lead the way in terms of transparency as far as the UK is concerned. Question 12, Keith Davis. Do you want to win? I want to win the dog. We both have to win that. I'm a fit cost of the bill of the bill of the well, ni'n gwybod wrth gwrs bod pethau dal i fod yn anodd i uh, bobl, ac wrth gwrs ni'n gweld heddi y ffaith bod twf economaidd wedi cwmpo. Be sy'n i mi, so i ac yw'n clywed yn gyson ar y stepen drws dydy ei hyn, prywen i dog, a rwy'n siŵr byddwch chi'n cytuno bod effaith pum lunedd o lywydroethu gan y caedwadwyr wedi cael effaith andwyol ar y weithrau. 5 miliwn ar gyflogu eisiau iawn, 1.3 miliwn mewn swyddi ran amser, a 1.3 8 million are getting debe zero. Well, uh, in Gubot, our biggest yawn is uh, the fact that in the Bridal, we're all bobal. Both of us see that in Bridal, in Vaur yawn, both we do. We see that we're heavy. Tau, but a two in the economy when you board our sale uh, shopper, I guess I'll bobal and put a mass. Do you see two when you're not in Harchi? The stim tool ring lean a sick and hybrid ball and can have him moy or ten. The stim tool ring lean a fight my ball and enneth. So, that you go over the sylvine, uh, so you recall the uh, our base map, they would recall the other line in our and in a two week and all my then and sylvine, see then dinner. Paul Davis. Well, of course, Marshall would rather data than Eddie, where he can slur, can need drift tan with a gnigger gun at short drift, lavir blanorol, ermoin help bigger a coste, bill to beth. Efallai bod chi yn ymwybodol o dariff newydd dŵr Cymru o'r enw help i'w a fydd o fydd i bobl sydd yr incwm o lai na 10,000 a hanner o binnoedd. Wrth gwrs, bydd y tariff yn helpu teluoedd ar yr incwm isaf gyda'u costau byw drwy ostwn cost eu biliau dŵr. Pa gymorth ychwan egol gallwch chi fel llywodraeth eu gynnig i gynlluniau fel hyn er mwyn lleihau costau byw i bobl. Wel, ni'n gweithio'n yn agos iawn wrth gwrs gyda, gyda dŵr Cymru, ac yn uh, croeso i'n fawr iawn beth maen nhw wedi, uh, wedi wneud uh, o'n i'n gwybod. Unwaith to, bobl yn dal i deimlo bod, bod, bod dim digon arian dwi'n yn, yn ei pocedi. Yn i'n gwybod bod na fwlch nawr sydd yn fwy ynglyn ar deficit, nag oedd yn 2010. Yn i'n gwybod bod y tw, unrhyw tŵf economaidd yn bregus iawn. A felly ni'n gwybod nawr, nawr yr amser i weld newid yn ynglyn â llywodraeth y Dennis yn edrych. Question 13, Jonathan Saunders. Thank you, Presiding yeah, yeah, yeah. Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on mental health support in North Wales? Yes, we expect, of course, provision to be made uh, in line with Together for Mental Health, and we continue to offer the LHB support to improve its mental health services as part of our escalation arrangements. Thank you, First Minister. In 2013, Tawel Van Dementia Ward at Espity Glan Clwyd was closed, patients transferred, and some staff suspended due to fears of the quality and safety of patient care. However, it's now been more than a year since the police were called in to investigate, and North Wales, the people of North Wales are none the wiser as to any outcome. Would, would the First Minister provide an update on the progress of this investigation, its estimated date for completion, and also what are the outcomes and what lessons have been learned, if any? Yeah. Well, in terms of Tawel Van, uh, the unit, of course, is no longer operational. 
there is a report that hasn't been published, but that's at the request of the police, because there's a police investigation. So I'm unable to give the member any further information with regard to that. It's a matter for the police uh, to provide information about. And of course, given the fact that there is a police investigation, it's uh, not possible for me to comment further at this time. Question 14, Andrew Archie Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, what steps have been taken by the Welsh Government to improve economic performance in South Wales Central? Well, a range of priorities, supporting jobs and growth and improving the business environment, and of course, uh, the provision of business support through Business Wales, ICT support, and of course, transport infrastructure improvements. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Uh, obviously, for many businesses, if they're seeking uh, planning permissions, for example, or environmental um, constraints or covenants to improve their business performance, they have an interface with Natural Resources Wales. Uh, today in the press, after a survey of Natural Resources Wales staff, only 14% of those staff have confidence uh, in the organisation's ability to work properly. Um, obviously, the government is the sponsoring uh, body. You put the money into it, uh, and it is vital that that organisation has a confidence of its staff to help economic activity in South Wales Central. Uh, how do you read the results from the survey of staff that only has 14% of the staff uh, confident in the direction of travel of that organisation? Well, I mean, no, it, it was 40, it's not a high figure, I grant him, but it was 14% in terms of the merger itself, not in terms of the future direction. It was always going to be difficult to bring three quangos together, uh, and uh, I do pay tribute to those involved in doing that. Nevertheless, it is important that business continues to have uh, faith in Natural Resources Wales. I know that officials have written to the Chief Executive uh, in order to seek uh, assurances following the publication of the survey. I'm not aware of businesses generally finding that NRW is unresponsive uh, in terms of dealing with planning applications. But it is important, of course, to make sure that what has been a, a difficult birth, that much is true, uh, that the, pro the good progress that's been made since is continued. And finally, Peter Black. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's policy on open cast mining? Yes, uh, Minerals Planning Policy Wales and the Minerals uh, Technical Advice Note 2 provide a comprehensive planning policy framework for determining planning applications for open cast coal extraction. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. Um, the Environment Minister made a, sta um, a statement last week in terms of asking, he would be asking the UK Government to help contribute towards the cost of reinstating open cast because of their, um, th their policy which if, uh, under previous governments, which effectively led to um, not enough money being put aside for that purpose. Can I ask you what, what, um, how the Welsh Government will be taking this forward and what sort of timescale we'll be talking about in terms of making those representations, obviously after May the 7th next week? <laughs> Well, there is a difficulty that exists in Wales, and indeed, I think more so in Scotland, and that is the, the issue of legacy open cast mining. When British coal was privatised, uh, the government of the day decided that it would not insist that enough money was put to one side in a bond in order to restore sites. And there are two particular sites, one of which is partially in my own constituency, one of which uh, it sits uh, further west. Uh, and we know that there are substantial restoration costs. Uh, surrounding uh, those two sites uh, and no indication has been given by the operators as to how those costs might be met in the future. Nevertheless, uh, there is a liability there. We do take the view uh, that it's not for the Welsh taxpayer to pick up a bill for a mistake that was made by the UK government in the early 1990s. And so to us, it's important that in terms of natural justice, that the mistakes that were made then are rectified through money being made available for restoration should it be needed for these two sites and other sites in the future. Thank you, First Minister. We now move to item two, which is a business statement, and I call on the business.